The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report. I'm Charles Firth and with me today is Dom Knight. Hello. Hello. So uh, we're doing another episode of Welcome Welcome to to the the Future. future. So excited to hear more devices coming down the pipe, Charles. Yes, and we've got a very, very good augmented reality device today that uh, I'm going to get to in a sec. But before that, I just wanted to say what genius I am, right? Oh. Um, Because, you know, a couple of months ago I said to you, Dom, I said, hey, why don't we spin off Welcome to the Future as a sort of regular podcast on its own feed? We'll still do it on a Wednesday on the Chase Report feed, but, you know, eventually it will turn into, like, this mega tech Yeah, like a a juggernaut. And we'll just – the main problem that we'll have is counting all our money, right? Mm, Yeah. Well, literally a few weeks after we started this project, the entire tech sector is about to go bankrupt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether you've seen the news over the weekend. The bank of Silicon Valley, which is called Silicon Valley Bank, mm. and it's the bank that pretty much every founding you know, firm, you know, like all those sort of little venture capital firms that end up being the mega corporations of tomorrow, like the Facebooks and the Twitters and the Reddits and the Roblox and everything, they all bank with this bank called Silicon Valley Bank. And um, there was a bank run on Friday, and um, it no longer exists. It literally got taken over by the uh, FDIC, which is the sort of insurance scheme there, and um, it's just fucked. It's gone. It's gone. It's already gone, right? And that that has, I mean, there, you know, there's sort of systemic risk that may crash the entire US economy, but there's also just the fact that there are going to be hundreds, if not thousands of tech companies who, uh, you know, there's a real question mark over whether they're going to be able to make payroll in the next few weeks uh, because, uh, you know, in the US, if you put more than $250,000 in your bank account, um, everything over $250,000 is not insured. You just sort of, you just, you, you could lose your money. Well, Charles, that just makes, so me, you go. That makes me very, very sad um, for all mm. concerned in the tech industry. And I just wish... They've been able to put those funds instead of putting it in in a, like a regulated bank. Hmm. They should have put it somewhere more sensible and safer, like crypto. If they just yes. put all their funds into into Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the other um, very reliable coins out there that have only lost ninety to to ninety five percent of their value over the past year or so, hmm. they'd have enough for at least one more week of payroll. Whereas, in fact, hmm. in this situation, they have nothing. Well, actually. So- it, it- it was interesting because um, somebody pointed out that, you know, perhaps, you know, these firms should have been in crypto. And then they pointed out that there's no possibility of a bank run in crypto because a, a blockchain is a form of technology that cannot possibly process – because there was like a $40 billion went out the door at Silicon Valley oh, Bank on yes. Friday. It can't possibly process even a fraction of that amount That's hilarious. in one so, day. So. Yeah, the, the future of – Finance, this amazing new technological platform yeah. for losing money, mm. um, is so unnimble that you can't even have yes. a run on it. That's yeah. pretty funny. So, and look, it, I mean, it was a classic uh, case of incredibly bad financial management. In, in fact, it made me think that, you know, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank is very much in the, in the realm of the sort of financial management that we have here at the chaser like it, it, the, oh yes the guy who was the chief finan- we had an account there did we the guy well no but the guy the cfo the, the fun, chief financial officer um his last job before joining silicon valley bank was at layman brothers in 2007 oh, fantastic <laughs> amazing so which uh you know it was obviously the largest um bank collapse in in the history of the world um and um and one of the other employees the chief risk officer <laughs> Also um, came from, um, was it from Lehman Brothers or, or Washington Mutual? It was one of the if you ones If you were formally well, so. in the risk division of Lehman Brothers, mm. how do you get another job as chief risk officer anywhere? Like the one thing, you, your, your one job is to stop this sort of thing from happening. Well, I'd it, love it, to see the CV that led them to get the job. Yeah, well, I, I think the other problem is that the previous risk officer left about a year ago, and uh, for most of 2022, 
they actually just had failed to appoint a chief risk officer. <laughs> so it was right. sort of so they got one um, in just in time for the for the collapse. Yeah, yeah. So um, and and the whole thing was it was about risk management. So the the actual sort of nuts and bolts of the collapse was quite interesting. Which is what happened was uh, in two thousand and twenty one. Uh, the head of the Federal Reserve, which is sort of a bit like the Reserve Bank here, so the Philip Lowe of America, yeah. said, look, I'll tell you what, um, the one thing that we won't do is raise interest rates rapidly, right? And so based on that comment, um, Silicon Valley Bank bought $170 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities, which basically, Uh-oh. you know, Paid, you know, about 1.9% interest, you know, low yield. But the whole point is totally hold their value as long as interest rates didn't start going up. Aren't mortgage-backed securities the literal thing that caused the 2008 financial crisis? Shut up, Dom. The GFC. Shut up, Dom. Shut well, I don't up. know much about finance, but I, I was just shut thinking, up. I've heard that term before. Oh, you're securities. one of these. You're one of these people who you know says that maybe they shouldn't have done the same thing again. Oh yeah. Oh good. You know, nice. Thanks for being wise in hindsight. Fuck with. I mean, who would have thought that a central banker would would make a prediction about the future of the world economy mm. that might be wrong later, unless they'd followed the work of Philip Lowe? If they'd been paying attention to Philip Lowe and the Reserve Bank. Mm. They wouldn't have done it because everyone knows that yes. Philip Lowe said they wouldn't put interest rates up, and then they did. Yes. So, point yeah, is, happened, happened a year um, ago. They then those all those securities that they bought, which it was sort of a bit like we work, right? Which is they bought a whole lot of things that didn't actually mature for thirty years, so they literally couldn't get their money back for thirty years. Mm. And then, you know, all these people sort of got a bit worried about, you know, oh. I want to take my cash out now. And the nature of a bank is you're allowed to take your cash out, right? Yeah, it's your cash. And then they just went, oh, we don't have any money. <laughs> I love I love how stupid banks are. Why would? Why well, haven't, well, haven't we started a bank? I honestly don't. Well, we have. We're chaserbank.org. Because the, the great thing it. about our bank is that no one who gave us money could possibly believe they were going to get it, it back. It. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I mean, you'd Chase- be, if you you'd put your Chaser Bank ATM card in, and you found you had any money to withdraw, you'd be astonished. It'd be such a pleasant surprise. Here we go. Chaserbank.org. Oh, important update. Recent media reports suggest that a data breach may have exposed the personal information of 20 million customers. We want to reassure you that if this breach had never been made public, you would have nothing to worry about, and we will work tirelessly to make sure you never have to worry again. Here is a cute picture of a baby to make you feel reassured. Check your data. I love that Chaserbank.org in my browser says... Not secure. Not secure. I <laughs> know, exactly. The Chaser Report. Less news, more often. So, Charles, that yeah. is quite amusing slash depressing. Yeah. Okay, so, but, yeah, we but, should get on with but the Charles, tech. We haven't yeah, had any Bluetooth sure. yet. I mean, that's yeah, it's I not know, a tech. Yeah. It's not a. It's a stupid tech okay. bank rather than a stupid tech product. And I think I think there needs to be more for our devoted listeners. So before we get to the gadget of the day, I'm just going to also talk about one other invention, which is which is, I'll just say in passing, which is somebody has developed an enzyme, discovered an enzyme that can turn air into electricity. It can. It, it's an enzyme that actually strips hydrogen from. Air really and turns it into electricity, like strips the electrons and turns it into electricity. So that's the future of the universe sorted. Like that's all our energy problems sorted in one fell swoop. Amazing. So that's a, that's the minor story of the day, and then mm. the it's it's still in early stages. Like it'll be we'll be at war with China by the time. Well, hang on, Charles. Presumably this is this is what they've discovered, but presumably the fossil fuel companies will conspire to stop it going anywhere, right? Like oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh no! Yeah, it's, just because you can just—it's disc- like it the electric car. You can, hell. It's, yeah. Just because you can just have a discovery doesn't mean you have to no, actually exactly change the does. world. But the thing that I want to uh, talk about today is, you know how Apple's about to release their VR AR headset? Like they're literally months away from yes uh, releasing it. There are in fact some really interesting use cases where there are actually. Good AR goggles out right now, so you don't need to you don't need to wait until Apple does it properly. Mm-hmm. Instead, you should buy a pair of the Sirius AR ski goggles. Ski goggles. Ski goggles. So this is the whole point, right? So everyone's saying, "Well, what's the 
fucking point of this AR VR headset because you're going to have this chunky headset around your head. No one's going to want to walk around with a chunky headset on the head. Mm. What do you do when you're skiing? You walk around with a chunky goggle oh, on your head the Oh, that's the one time day. when you wear stupid, annoying goggles. It's, that's true. It's the perfect use case. So it's the, the serious AR ski goggles are, are pretty amazing. Now, they don't actually exist yet. Oh, of course so just, not. Just little, but they've got some amazing demo videos that, if true, and that's a little bit of a caveat, if true... Um, do things like they, they monitor your real-time speed, they give you a clock, they give you temperature, they give you friend-finding and tracking, like inside the headset. So as you're skiing down, wow, you can get distracted by all these different, you know, things on your sort of thing. So you don't have to pay attention to the lovely ski slope anymore and the beautiful nature that you're in. Yeah, and the beautiful tree that's coming for you. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Because there's one yeah. time you, you really, really would have plenty of time to welcome dis- distractions and things beeping at you and distract, is when you're hurtling mm. down a, a snowy slope full of objects, which if you hit could prove fatal. <laughs> that, that'd be the time yeah. to really just enjoy the amazing augmented reality experience and look mm. it might maybe it will flash a tree a tree like well, two seconds it does. It, you i mean it's back. got yeah it, i don't know i mean it could it, it can record in hd all your sort of thing and it can all give your you crashes weight. all your fatal cr- so the accident investigators can, <laughs> yeah, can you have <laughs> hd vision of your impact but it gives you directions it gives you a compass it gives you you know your elevation so you can see yourself um, not moving in elevation once you've crashed. Um, it can even give you phone notifications of your SMSs that are coming. Oh, through. that's very useful. Yeah, from mm. from spammers. So, yeah, so it's a real way to you know if ever you go skiing and you go, oh, this is nice to get away. I just like to be in nature. Mm. This ruins all of that in one fell swoop. I mean, I suppose the lucky thing is that because um, neither of these go- – so there's actually two two companies are making competing ski goggles. Oh, of course. There's one by Sirius and one by Recce, right? Mm-hmm. It's worth checking out. The thing is neither of them – can be reviewed yet because they, <laughs> but they've got a ama- mate like the I can't tell you how good the videos look like for once you know like about the idea of what they will be like once they oh sure yeah, yeah. I mean I've often thought that that the notion of um you know sunglasses or something if you're in a strange city and you need to know the directions and so on the little sunglasses that point you in the direction to go so you're not looking because we do when you look at your phone walking around at an unfamiliar city or something it is very dangerous. Traffic can be on the other side of the road or something. You might need to know which mm. way to go, and maybe you can get signs translated in real time. That that stuff all sounded quite useful mm. at at walking pace. Yes, not no, at very high not speed, at hurtling down, hurtling down, down a mountain hill. space. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like I hope they let you play games. I hope you get to play snake <laughs> in your little goggles as you as you're skiing down the hill. Well, it, it's interesting because it's it's supposed to be sort of augmenting your reality Mm. what they're claiming is that it's not so much for like games it's for things like ai so their whole idea is that um combined the combining the sort of video camera with an ai will allow it to sort of tag tag things in your vision so as you hurtle towards that tree oh it will come up and say oh there's a tree there (laughs) and point it out it can identify the species of the tree that takes you out yeah exactly that's brilliant that said uh just having a look at it like it is really very clear that it doesn't act, I mean there's lots of amazing like it looks amazing right yeah but it's clear that it doesn't actually exist yet um, right although they do say our innovations and in proprietary technologies make us the leaders in civilian AR plus AI system and outdoor AR pioneers TM thank you to years of continuous R&D and our brilliant team we were able to create products that are unrivaled yeah, so it's not clear to me, though, that they have actually created the product yet. And I think, Charles, that is an amazing use case for augmented reality <laughs> glasses. Mm. Is if you're browsing the internet or something and there's something that clearly doesn't exist and is a scam, mm. it can pop up and tell you, don't buy this product. I've just done a quick check in the background and it doesn't yes, actually exist and it never that will. Is, that is the use case. You should buy the, the ski goggles. Look, actually, I'll tell you what. So, so the ones by Sirius, the ones that I was talking about, don't exist. Yep. The Recce Smart Snow Goggles 
Mm-hmm. This is honestly true. Are available for pre-order, Dom. Hello. They're available for the pre-order for the three forty-nine. Three forty-nine. Yeah. So we this is get the, some. This is the less. I wonder when they'll be delivered. It didn't say. You, you do have to. You have to use Bluetooth to. Um, of course, because uh, if there's one to, thing to sync you want to rely to your phone. on, there's one thing you want to be able to rely on as you're hurtling down the slope. It's Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah. When's that ever gone wrong? So the, the recce. So this is the recce, the one that's available for pre-order. It's not as high tech as the one that doesn't exist. So it's got a five-hour battery life, which is useful if you nice. want to go out for a full day of skiing. Mm. You will conk out halfway through. Um, it's glove f- friendly, which is great. It's got swappable lenses. It sounds like an amazing high tech way to die. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to do much. It literally just seems to be it, like this. The recce one seems to just be about um, answering calls and viewing stats. It's, it's essentially oh. the same as you get if you put a fucking AirPod in your in your. <laughs> Or a watch. You can control music. You can check your notifications. I mean, it's all these things. Bullshit. All these things are on the Apple Watch, right? Um, oh, and 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 you can like, even though you can't actually get the goggles yet, you can download the Android Beta app. Um, so there you go. That'll be useful. So, oh, Charles, um, look, I would have ordered them all know. already, but unfortunately, all my money's in the Silicon Valley Bank. Agurus <laughs> <laughs> from Road, and we're part of the Iconoclast Network. See you tomorrow.